So I've been running around covering news like a maniac by myself. I have become that person who's eating out of a fast food bag in the car all the time. Downtown Jonesboro here. And on the right is my old newspaper right there, the News Daily. My office used to be over there until COVID got me laid off. <sighs> okay, see what's going on here. Robin Kemp has a fight on her hands. Ta-da, glorious, isn't it? Places like this is where democracy is born, right? She set up her own one-woman website, providing fact-based coverage of the election and to the citizens of Clayton County, Georgia. Okay. On election night, Robin was at the count in Jonesboro. Suddenly, there was intense right. scrutiny yes. from Republican observers. There was a guy at one point who, was, who came in and brought a bunch of more observers in, and he was like, Team A, you're over here. Team B, get in there. I, why? Just come in and observe. Some of those observers are still here. These guys over here, they're going to be camera shy. Let's go see them. In Georgia, they're recounting the ballots. Not that it'll make any difference to who eventually becomes America's next president. Did you guys ever find any, I mean, you mentioned some improprieties, but did you have specific ones that you were actually going to go after? So no comment on that. We would refer you to our press secretary. There you go. <laughs> They're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election. That's not true. But a different battle is being waged. And today, more reports of dead people voting from beyond the grave. Not for the White House, that's decided, but for the narrative. It's been, frankly, embarrassing. No evidence, unprofessional, desperate. It's a battle fought not in the real world, but on social media and the cable news networks. I mean, why not just say, we're not going to accept the results of this election? It's outrageous. But there are real-world consequences. Who do you think that Donald Trump won re-election? In Atlanta, the Stop the Steal caravan has gathered in front of the state capitol building. They're on their way to Washington. We've been robbed, and we're coming from the ditches, we're coming from the woods, we're coming from Alabama, we're coming from everywhere, we're going from here to make, uh, he's calling for a million in Washington, we're going to try to make it two million. Despite the lack of credible evidence, opinion polls suggest around 80% of Republican voters believe the election was fraudulent, feeding fringe conspiracy theories about a deep state plot. Hey, yeah, I just wondered if you could tell me about Q and... The plan to save the world. Yeah. <laughs> this is all just a ploy for them to get Trump out of office because they don't want Woo! Trump exposing what the real end game of the left wing is, and that's to normalize pedophilia. QAnon followers believe Donald Trump is battling to save America from a secret pedophile ring at the heart of government. So this is not just some crackpot conspiracy theory. There is obviously well-educated people who have taken the time to step outside of the box and to stop having other people think for them. This is still a fringe movement, but a newly elected congresswoman from Georgia has expressed support for the QAnon conspiracy. We asked her for an interview. Her office responded with a three-word answer. No foreign press. Beneath the more outlandish and sometimes, frankly, crazy things being said here, there is a more basic feeling. These people feel that for many years now, traditional government has not been working for them. America has become a country divided, not just over ideas, but over truth itself. 
Well, now the President of the United States is literally embracing a deranged conspiracy theory. A country in which grievance is weaponized. It's cancel culture, the delusional wokeism that energizes the mob in the streets, in politics, and in media. So this is the Confederate Cemetery in Jonesboro, Georgia, where the Battle of Jonesboro was fought. The culture war is spreading from the old battlegrounds into almost every aspect of American life. As a journalist, I try to keep a skeptical eye and, and an open ear. And I believe that there are quite a few people in this country who no longer rely on factually based information to make their decisions. And simply by saying this, I immediately become subject to criticism of people saying I'm a liar. How, how is that kind of change in how people and what information people are consuming? How has that I affected your work? I cannot get one single Trump supporter to speak to me and I know them. Personally, you know them? Yes. As Facebook and Twitter have begun cracking down on disinformation about the election, some Trump supporters have been moving to other social media platforms. I'm trying to find the app so I can contact this guy. Uh, hey Siri, open signal. One of Robin's contacts is a local militiaman. His name is Justin Thayer, and he goes by the nickname Slayer. Uh, Thayer's group provided security to uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's campaign. She's the congresswoman who's supported the QAnon conspiracy theory. I think that a lot of folks who are very Second Amendment uh, loyal uh, or who are in militias and who believe that they are the last line of defense between democracy and all-out chaos feel that their moment may be near. Is that usual? Do you see this usually at elections? No. I've never seen anything like this before. Georgia is still in the eye of the electoral storm. As well as the presidential recount, the state will vote in January in two runoff races that could decide who controls the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, John Ossoff. Change has come to Georgia. Change is coming to America. Yes. Buoyed by the success of their presidential candidate, the talk at Democratic rallies is about healing, but that hasn't always been the case. This tendency to, to demonize the other side um, has come from both sides. It, it, over the past four years, it has ramped up to such a peak. How do you, how do you put that back in the bottle? President-elect Biden, Vice President-elect Harris campaigned explicitly on unity. But here's what I would say further to your question. Corruption in American politics is not a partisan problem, it's a systemic problem that it taints both parties. The reason that there's been such a destruction of confidence in our institutions that then paved the way for the rise of a right-wing demagogue is that deeper underlying corruption. About an hour's drive north of Atlanta is the town of Rome. I'm Marjorie Green, and I'm running for Congress in the 14th District of Georgia. Marjorie Taylor Green ran here on a range of typically conservative issues, anti-abortion, pro-gun. But she's also the congresswoman-elect who believes in the QAnon conspiracy. The voters of this district have just dispatched to Washington a representative who believes that America is under threat from, in her words, a global cabal of Satan-worshipping paedophiles. She ran unopposed after her Democratic opponent pulled out, forcing some Republican voters to balance their conservative instincts against her more outlandish beliefs. Yeah, I, I don't think I buy into that. I'm more of the middle. Do you feel comfortable that somebody like that represents you in Washington? Yeah, I'm not worried about that. You're not worried about it? No. Okay, all right. If there had been somebody on the ballot who 
didn't believe in cabals of Satan worshipping paedophiles, would you have preferred to vote for somebody like that? Well, that's very speculative. Yeah. I would, in the Republican primary, I very well might have. Yeah. But I would never vote for somebody as liberal as what the current left agenda has. This new, extreme, radical, democratic, socialist, and even lawless party. In the hyper-polarized, hyperbolic world of the internet and cable news. This week, 82 years ago, Kristallnacht happened. It feels as if America has just made a choice. It led to an attack on fact, knowledge, history, and truth. Not between two centrist parties in an established democracy, but about something much more fundamental. After four years of a modern day assault on those same values by Donald Trump, the Biden-Harris team pledges a return to norms. They're on a quest for power at all costs. Which helps explain why some people are contemplating the future in such existential terms. The militiaman Robin contacted didn't want to speak to us on camera, but he put us in touch with one who did. Our country has fallen apart. Uh, we, we, we no longer have uh, Democrats and Republicans. We have um, you know, people uh, moving further to the left towards socialism, Marxism, communism. Either President Trump leads us or we the people will lead ourselves. I'm talking about honoring the oath that I took to defend the Constitution with my life. That's not a threat, the that's a promise. The Constitution guarantees free and fair elections and a peaceful transfer of power. That's the point, isn't it? Right, hence uh, free and fair elections. So when we have this rampant fraud, we do not have free and fair elections. It feels to me like there's no way that you're going to accept anything other than Donald Trump. Yeah, I, 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 verily I would say to you, I will not fucking accept it. Eleven days since the election, the Stop the Steal caravan has descended on Washington. Holed up inside the White House and still not conceding, Donald Trump has barely been seen in public. But then... It looks like he's doing a lap around the square here. There he is. That's him. <laughs> They're trying to steal it from me. We can't have that. We can't have that. No, he's our president, he's our commander in chief, and always will be. Oh my god, I love that man. Woo! CNN sucks! CNN sucks! Fox News sucks! Fox News sucks! All the networks have called it for Biden, including Fox News. What the hell happened? What a disgrace! They're the enemy of the people. A million people, it is not. Maybe a few tens of thousands, still. USA! 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 And the Speaker of Honor is the Congresswoman-elect from Georgia's 14th district. The Democrat Party is no longer an American party. No. They're the party of socialism, the party of riots. The party of burning businesses. Question from the BBC in London. I just wanted to ask you, do you really believe that Donald Trump is fighting a cabal of Satan-worshipping paedophiles? Trump is fighting to save America and stop socialism. So you guys, you know what, you can keep all your stuff and we're all here today to support our president. We're not here answering silly questions. This is about our country, America first, not about the BBC. Is it about you? No. no, you're ridiculous. Why don't you go cover Russian collusion conspiracy theory lies? Why don't you go cover that? Later, they marched towards the Supreme Court. Some here cling to the hope that conservative judges might yet overturn 
the results of the election. Among them, members of the Proud Boys militia, whom Donald Trump infamously told to stand back and stand by during the first presidential debate. The day passed off peacefully for the most part. But Donald Trump is morphing from commander-in-chief with more than 70 million voters behind him to a figurehead for the aggrieved. I'm not interested in pushing one candidate or another. I'm, it's, that's not what I'm doing here. In Jonesboro, Robin Kemp continues her one-woman fight for a common set of truths. If people are getting bad information or propaganda, which is a piece of the truth wrapped up in a tissue of lies, um, they don't have all the information they need to make a sound decision in a democracy. It's tedious, unglamorous work. Call the elections and registration office to see if Sean is available. But upon it may depend the future of these United States. Hurry up and wait. The reporter's life, hurry up and wait.